Eventually, the white blood cells die, pus builds up, and the lymph nodes burst open, releasing bacteria and lethal toxins into the bloodstream. Without antibiotic treatment, you will die within a week from shock due to spontaneous bleeding into the skin and mucous membranes. Yersinia pestis is an ancient bacterium that causes the bubonic plague. In the 14th century alone, the disease took over 75 million lives. Often dismissed as a pathogen of yesteryear, the bacterial disease continues to kill 1 to 2,000 worldwide yearly. So if you're in the mountains and you see a dead squirrel, don't go near it because that squirrel may have died from plague and the fleas could jump on you and cause plague. It could get into the bloodstream immediately and cause a systemic type of plague that has a mortality rate of 50 to 75 percent if it's left untreated. Yersinia pestis is considered by many to be the deadliest germ in the history of human civilization. Although another horrifying germ just might catch up to it. Number two, the human immunodeficiency virus, or HIV. HIV can cause the acquired immune deficiency syndrome known as AIDS, which has taken approximately 25 million lives since 1975. At this very moment, HIV infects more than 36 million people across the world. HIV is a diabolical virus. The cells it infects are the very cells that should be fighting it off. And the problem is, unlike many other viruses, the human body cannot get rid of it. It's an infection for life. Each virus has its own way of ravaging the human body. But HIV is completely unique. HIV itself doesn't kill. The microbial stalker shuts down a person's immune defenses, the tools used to fight off invading germs, by infecting and annihilating crucial immune cells called helper T cells. Once a person loses too many T cells, his or her body can no longer deal with other microbes that cause infections. HIV basically opens the floodgates. As a result, germs eventually overrun HIV-infected people, and they die of lung and skin infections or other diseases. This is known as AIDS. Over time, as the virus multiplies more and the immune system gets ravaged by the virus, the human body has less and less potential to fight off HIV because the HIV is killing the very cells that should be fighting it off. Someone who has HIV cannot get rid of the virus. They can only give copies of it to some other person when they interact with them. The virus enters humans and you don't know you have it for a very long period of time. And this allows you to more easily pass it on to other humans in the population. There are currently several drugs to combat HIV. They cannot cure the infection, but they can keep it in check by suppressing HIV replication. Unfortunately, in Africa and other developing parts of the world where HIV is spreading most rapidly, most people don't have access or enough money to buy these drugs. HIV has shed untold misery, but there's another virus that just may be the scariest germ on the planet. So what is considered by many to be the scariest germ to exist on the face of the Earth? It is believed that the origin of this killer lies in the Democratic Republic of the Congo in Africa. Bush hunters are returning from a successful hunt. They've captured and killed chimpanzees to feed their starving families. But instead, they may deliver them a death sentence. Their bloody knives and hands are covered with perhaps the most lethal germ on the planet. Number one, the Ebola virus. This microbial predator causes Ebola hemorrhagic fever, a bleeding disorder 
which has nearly a 100% fatality rate, the highest of any known pathogen. And what's more, there's no cure. Ebola virus is highly deadly. It's one of the most deadly viruses ever known to interact with humans. Ebola is called a hot virus because it's so lethal. Transmission of the disease is still unconfirmed. Gorillas and chimps were originally thought to be the reservoir host of the pathogen. The virus doesn't affect reservoir hosts. They're merely carriers of the virus. But startling new evidence suggests that the Central African fruit bat may be the reservoir, which in turn infects the ape species. Ebola is transmitted to humans through blood or bodily fluid of an infected animal or human who's contracted the disease. Hundreds have already fallen victim to this microbe in Central Africa. There's a ritual among some tribes in Africa where the body of a dead relative is washed by all members of the family. Well, that's a perfect recipe for spreading Ebola from one person to another because you have blood that is teeming with the virus. Once Ebola enters the body, the virus targets many types of cells, eventually entering cells lining the blood vessels, where it multiplies so quickly it destroys the vessel surfaces, causing profuse internal bleeding. Ebola viruses saturate the bloodstream, causing the formation of blood clots, which eventually block the blood supply to the major organs. This leads to organ failure. Within one to two weeks, the clotting leads to death in a process called crashing out, with spontaneous hemorrhaging occurring from every possible orifice. A person dies a violent death with bleeding out of all orifices and sometimes even blood oozing through the skin. Contracting Ebola may be rare for the average citizen of the world, but since the virus spreads with destructive speed and there is no approved vaccine or treatment, the CDC has classified the Ebola virus as a Category A bioterrorism agent. This means it has the highest potential for adverse large-scale human catastrophes. There's no evidence that Ebola can be transmitted via the respiratory route in humans, but they've shown that it can be transmitted via the respiratory route in apes. So that's a little scary. That's easier transmission than transmission by contact with blood. These killer germs are undoubtedly here to stay. But at any time, one of these blood-curdling monsters could be bumped off the list. In the future, an even scarier germ could emerge that's highly contagious, resistant to all drugs and our immune system. Mankind could face microbial Armageddon from one of the smallest creatures in the world.